I had a darts for a long time. I've got long arms, so I could always grab the grip on the darts. Uh, it was very easy for guys with long arms to grab the grip. After someone tapped, you know, uh, in the gym, they would be like rubbing their neck and saying, man, you just cranked me, you hurt my neck. And I think a lot of people have that experience with the darts. Um, so what I had to do is kind of break it down and figure out what it was. So uh, I made up three easy rules for, for, a, for a choke and a strangulation. So we all know there's like differences between a choke and a strangulation. A choke is a windpipe, strangulation uh, is the blood. So the three rules that I made up for it. So for a choke is windpipe. What I need to attack the windpipe is I need a straight bar. I can't have any shape. It's got to be shoulder to shoulder, straight bar across the neck. The second thing is if Liz turns her head, then I'm no longer hitting her windpipe. So I need a straight bar. I have to somehow control the directional turn of her chin. So if she can't turn, she gets some pressure in here. The third part is I want to slightly bring her chin towards her sternum. So from my... Thanks. Uh, so the three real rules for a choke, I need a straight bar, I want to control the directional turn of the chin, and I want to slightly bring her chin towards her sternum. For a... Uh, on your knees. For a strangulation, I want a triangle shape fall on the chin. So my elbow, the crux, the V-shape in my elbow follows the V-shape of Lizzie's chin. So first rule, I need to V-shape following. Second is I want to create a triangle shape. Maybe if I was very strong, I could choke with one arm, but probably not. So I need to make a triangle shape. Once I have a triangle shape, I have to figure out how to make it smaller. So it seems very easy with the rear naked choke. That's why I use that example. And we're going to do with the darts, the darts, my darts is the strangulation, and my arm and guillotine is the choke. So, I think an easy way um, to learn this is from side control. You don't have to worry so much about the legs. I do the same thing from half guard and other places, but um, it's easy to learn from here. So, try not to be dead, be alive. Okay. So, this is the kind of position I can hit Darcy's and I can hit um, Guillotine's from. So if I did have her flat, I can kind of take, give this the underhook. And all I'm looking for is chin control here. So I like to hold on to my partner's chin. When I'm here, I don't even worry about getting my hands together. We're just gonna go here, and I'm gonna hold on to start. So we'll just do a couple of reps, top and bottom, and side control, this starts to pummel our arm. I don't go for this arm first, I go for chin first, because the chin controls the direction of the body. So I hold chin, and I just put this hand through, this will be good for now. And this is where all my darts and eating stuff's gonna come from. So side control, I can let her pummel by leaving some space. As soon as on our, chin, uh, our side, I grab a chin. And I'll just put my hand, you can, don't even worry about this hand right now, it's just under our armpit. Super easy, right? So, let's start with that. Maybe a couple reps, top and bottom, and come back in. Good, one, two. So, the grip that I like to take, I hold the chin with a C cup here. This allows me to turn her head if I want to, I can move it around. So, uh, for, for all these, for both the setups, I'm holding the chin, uh, the point of the chin and the palm of my hand. On your side. So here, I just grab the chin straight away. Even though she has an underhook now, if she tries to use it, I can always turn her head, I can always move it around. This gives me so much control. And also all my setups are from here. So, uh, another thing here, if I'm holding this down super tight, she tries to get on her side and I'm like, trying to grab her head here, like it's not really there. So, if I'm bearing for this, for the, this position, I kind of want her to be here. She kind of wants to be here anyway to escape. So if, if, if I give her the underhook or if she gets the underhook, I kind of take my pressure off a little bit to allow it to turn. So if Lizzie's head is on the mat, I can't really get my hand underneath it. As soon as her head leaves the mat, then there's space for my grip. So we'll do a couple more reps, just allowing, give pressure, give pressure. You'll see, you see underhook. I kind of relax. Grab the chin, thread the arm through. Does that make sense? Good, one, two. So this is my spot to set up, this is my spot to set up the darts uh, and the guillotine. I'll hold the chin. So everyone asks about this arm, what am I gripping with? It depends, uh, sort of on Liz's reaction, also what I'm trying to go for. Um, I think we'll start with the darts. I think the guillotine is very easy to learn. The darts might take a little more time, so I'll start with the darts and do the guillotine after. And what I do to set this up, so I love to hold her chin. This arm is not gripping anything. I'm going to thread it through, I'm going to pull Lizzie's net, uh, cool, Lizzie's chin into this V-shape in my elbow. So remember, I said a strangulation, I want her chin to follow the V-shape of my uh, crux of my elbow here. 
when this arm comes, do not kind of slide a little bit through here. And uh, sit up for a second. <laughs> so I'm pushing Lizzie's chin into my elbow. So I don't want the straight part in there, I want it to be all the way in the elbow. <coughs> So I hold her chin the whole time as I'm threading this through. And I push her chin into my elbow. So next part here. So anytime I do a strangulation, <coughs> pretty much. Um, we could compare the dash to a, to a triangle with your legs, right? Would everyone agree with that? Yeah. It's an arm show, it's like an arm and choke. So a lot of people are doing a dash, just stay here. A lot of people are doing a dash, sort of they're doing a triangle like this. Everyone knows that'd be a terrible idea, right? They posture, you hurt your ankle. You should do your triangle like this. So you're not using your feet or your hands really. So it's the same thing with my dance. When I post this through, uh, Lizzie's chin is now on my elbow. I want to be able to see four fingers worth of my wrist. And what that means, I don't end up on my hand. I end up with a, with a hand that can move freely. If my hand can move freely, I know that if you feel your arm, down to about here is muscle. It's pretty soft, it doesn't hurt anything. Then I have a sharp blade here. So if this part's pulling up into your partner's neck, they're gonna think you're an asshole when you're done, right? So I kind of hide that part in my arm. So I hold the chin, push it towards the elbow. Now I can see four fingers there, which means my arm can fit into place. My hand should be able to move freely. Now the, the third rule or the second rule of the strangulation was make a triangle shape. If I bring my hand up here, I'm not making the triangle shape. If I bring it up behind Lizzie's shoulders, and it's a triangle shape. And so I'm not squeezing with either of my hands. So it's a straight line up in the air here. So it'll be easier to see without this. <clears throat> so I'm holding the chin. This elbow will be slightly off the ground. If it's on the ground, it's harder to stick our chin into. So I'm here holding the head. I push it towards my elbow. I'm bringing her head down with my elbow and I want about to see four fingers on my wrist. That means my bicep meets my wrist and this hand can move, move freely. Now this isn't a triangle shape, but when I bring this hand towards my opposite armpit, I make that triangle shape, that key shape. So I'm here holding the chin. I'm basically bringing this elbow down, uh, keep it there. I'm bringing this elbow down a little bit. This makes my arm longer and dropping my left elbow a little bit. Now I can see four fingers on my wrist. I've meet my wrist off my bicep. So there's no fingers and no hands involved. This hand comes up towards my opposite armpit. With someone smaller like Liz, I might even have to go even higher. Against most normal sized people, it would probably just be here. But the goal is to make my forearm in a straight line with Lizzie's shoulders. If you do this right, you should feel you don't have to squeeze at all. And you're never hitting the sharp part of your partner's neck. Does that make sense? You want to see it a couple of times. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so I'm holding the chin. Liz is going to try and straighten her head up, so I just walk my elbow down towards my hip. This hand's coming underneath until I can see four fingers on my wrist. My bicep touches off my wrist so my hand can flop around. So I'm not on my, hand, my fingers at all. If I'm on my fingers, see Liz is super strong, obviously, so she postures up and I start to lose that grip. If it's bent over in a C shape, she can posture all she likes. She's going against uh, the strongest shape I can make. This hand doesn't come up by the spine, it comes up over her shoulder to this position. And if you do it right, the sharp part's never hitting the neck, and um, it's an easy position to control. Let's try it first, and we'll come back with some questions, I'll answer them then. Maybe three top, three bottom. One, two. So, some people were here grabbing the grip. It's possible to do this way and leave the arm inside, but the benefit to having this grip is I don't have to. Like, I can make my arms longer. So you see Lizzie's hand is here. I want to deal with this first, unless I'm much, much bigger than someone. So to do that, my hand comes, uh, move the arm out of the way, put it under here, perfect. So I do two things. One, I bring this elbow towards my right hip. It's a very strong motion. My elbow is pretty much uh, on the crown of Lizzie's head, so I bring it in just a little bit. This hand comes through, and it still doesn't go anywhere, so I drop my elbow, uh, drop my armpit. Now this hand can be infinitely long. I'm directing Lizzie's chin towards my elbow. So I'm directing her chin right in here. So once the arm's out of the way, like that's as long as my arm is right now. I bring my elbow down, or there's a little bit longer. I drop my elbow, now my arm is super long. Then I meet bicep. So the whole time I should be able to move my hand. 
If my hand can't move, I know I'm on fingers. If I'm on fingers, two things can happen. A strong person postures or a squeeze and hurt her neck. Here, it doesn't really matter. Even if you do it wrong, you don't hurt someone. Then it's just a straight line. So I don't come up this side, I come up to my left armpit with no squeeze. So, uh, two focuses here. One, bring the elbow towards your hip. Two, drop your left elbow, uh, left armpit below her armpit. And that magically pops her arm out. Here, make sure you can see your wrist. Wrist meets on bicep. Then a straight line that follows the line of her shoulders. Does anyone have other questions? Or should we try that first? Do you squeeze your Not really. Uh, I think that would make the triangle smaller, but I don't have to. Um, for a strangulation, I think that I should be able to hold it for a minute or two. I can hold this position for a long time and never feel tired. For a choke, I'll do 10 seconds hard and then give up. For a, for a strangulation, it's like a cumulative. So I want to be able to hold it as long as I can. If I'm squeezing too much, it doesn't work in the fight that I'm so tired afterwards. So for a strangulation, I, I rarely squeeze. I want the shape to do the work for me. So the rear naked choke example, could you squeeze and bring your elbows together? Sure, a lot of people teach it, but I know that I get tired really quickly. <laughs> if I just keep on walking this hand over here, it gets tighter and tighter, but I'm not using more energy. Does that make sense? Let's try it again with the drop of the elbow, the drop of the armpit, and the little squeeze of the elbow. One, two. So the main problem I saw was people just leaving the arm in there. Um, it's gonna make it much harder. So remember this is like a compression choke, so I want this to happen. I want Lizzie's shoulder and my bicep to sort of meet. If I leave this out here, it's much harder to push her shoulder and her neck together. It's possible, but much, much harder. So what I'm doing, if you just watch this side, I'm holding the chin with this arm, I'm doing this. I'm switching my hips. If I, if I stay here and switch my, like just leave my chest in the way, our arm stays in my back. So I sort of take, I take it out of the way, I move myself to my left hip on the ground as I'm turning. Here, uh, someone asked me, what's the best way to transition the grip? So when you get to this spot, you sort of like, you've got head control, you can see your wrist. And there's two ways that I do it. One is just I can make a C shape and I catch it. So I, li I like this one, it's nice and fast. The other one that I do is grab my bicep, or I'll grab my tricep, then my arm comes out, and then I transition. So I, I have two ways of doing it. So the number one issue is people weren't freeing the arm out. So my armpit goes below Lizzie's and I turn my chest and kick my leg backwards to bring the arm out. Once I'm here, I need to make sure her chin goes towards my elbow. <coughs> if her chin is here, it's not gonna be a strangulation so I don't have the two sides. So here I feel, I know where my elbow is, I just make her chin touch it. And then I catch. In this part, I don't want this to be an angle. I want this to be to follow the line of her shoulders. If it follows the line of her shoulders, I'm compressing the triangle in the most efficient way. Let's do one more round. This time, grab a different partner, different shape, different size. Go. So, uh, I got a good question over here. I said, where's your weight distribution? Are you pressuring down? I mean, what are you doing here? Uh, the answer, I don't really do anything. I believe in this shape. If I have this locked in correctly where my fingers aren't involved, I know my grip's never gonna wear out. It's bone against bone. Bone against fingers is gonna wear out fairly quickly. Bone against hand, a little bit slower. If I get bone against bone, I can hold the shape all day. So I'm in no rush to pressure and push uh, my opponent. M maybe in a real fight I would, but you know, when I get to this position, look, I'm just holding this position. I'm not sprawling at all. I know I'm in the right spot. I'm using zero energy. I could sprawl a little bit, it would, it would be fine. But I know if I just keep on walking that hand higher and higher, then I get the tap with using minimal energy. Um, but a sprawl would be fine. Just make sure you've got the right grip first. I'd say, as a word of caution, keep on going for this position, but be aware. If this part's touching the neck, then it's a hassle. And by the neck, can I sit Stay there. So by the neck, I mean anywhere behind Lizzie's ears. If you touch yourself anywhere here, it feels okay, right? But you can be squeezed here, not a big hassle. As soon as you go past the, the ears, you're like, fuck. If someone squeezes there, you're out of training for a week, stretching your neck, right? So I don't want to be that training partner. I want to practice my Darcy's safely. If I can practice them safely, I'll keep on getting to do them over and over again with a bunch of different partners. So when I'm looking at this, um, again, make sure you get this arm out of the way. A few people are still getting confused. Then from here, the chin pushes into my elbow. I want her chin to face the same way as the V-shape in my elbow. That makes sure I'm cutting off both arteries. So here, once your arm is through, I don't just lock anywhere here. See the sharp parts against the back of Lizzie's neck now. So I push her chin into my elbow. Then I can grab. 
My hand can flop, so I know if I bring this in a straight line. And by straight line, I mean my elbow. My right elbow goes close to Lizzie's shoulder, and this hand comes all the way up here. So see, my forearm is, is following the same line as the top of Lizzie's shoulders. Once I have this position, like, there's nothing she can really do, it's done. But she can't posture, she can't roll, once she's locked up in that, in that way. Does anyone have any other questions? No matter which angle your body is facing in relation to, uh, to Lizzie, so like, so, it's, so she's in more of this line, if you're moving more towards her head? Uh, I, I, I pretty much stay more. like 90 degrees for now. Once I lock the Darson, I've got a bit more freedom um, when I'm finishing it. But until I lock it in, I want to be able to switch between the guillotine and the dars. Um, the defense for one is like the attack for the other. So until I have this locked in place, I'll stay at a 90 degree angle. Okay. Any other questions? No? Perfect. Um, so we'll have more time to practice this, but before then, the guillotine stuff. So this is my same setup for the guillotine. Uh, for the dars, before it's locked in, a good idea for Liz is either to roll to her back, this, now that it's no longer there, right, and I don't have the option to dart her anymore, or in theory she'd get to her knees. These would be two things that would sort of stop this hand, uh, or stop it easily getting into a dart position. Um, so, we'll see if we have time for both. First, we'll do it, go to the back, that's often what the person tries to do. Um, so, from here, this time, uh, sit up for a second. I go on your knees this time. So the main thing you'll get wrong here, I'm going for an arm and guillotine. The whole key here, I want my elbow to be below Lizzie's shoulder. If it's here, where am I squeezing against her artery? That's not going to do a lot of good. I bring my elbow below. My right elbow below her shoulder. Once it's below her shoulder, what do I have? I have that straight bar that I was talking about for a choke. So my elbow's too high, I bring it down. I shouldn't be able to see my elbow. It should be hidden uh, underneath her, the line of her shoulder. Second, if she can turn her head to face you guys, turn your head. Then, again, I'm not squeezing the... Uh, the throat, so I need to squeeze my elbow in. Then third, if she's gonna look up, that means I can't bring her chin down towards the sternum. So elbow hides, squeeze, then my shoulder comes back a little bit. Elbow down, squeeze, shoulder back. In fact, let's just practice it right here first, and then we'll turn to the mount one. It's a little bit trickier for mount, but it's exactly the same details. So checkpoint number one, can I see my elbow? Yes, okay, put it lower down. Can you turn her head? Yes, okay, I squeeze my elbow. And fear, just roll my shoulder back. This hand will help, of course. I'll be doing everything with this hand. But if you can do it with one hand, you know, you know you're doing it right. Uh, you have a choice here. You can keep holding the chin, which I do, or you can bring your forearm through. As long as your elbow's below and you can squeeze and roll your shoulder back, then you're good. So the three keys, hide your shoulder, uh, hide your elbow, squeeze your elbow, roll your shoulder. And the difference, the main one you'll get wrong is not bringing your elbow below the line of the shoulder. Because you see these UFC guys doing it, doing it all wrong, but they're so fucking strong, it doesn't matter. Uh, and they don't give a shit if they crank their, they're, they're, not, they're not fighting their friends, I guess. Um, so elbow low. It'll pretty much end up parallel with the shoulder blades or, or collarbones. So just start right here. On her knees, elbow below. Squeeze your elbow to her head, roll your shoulder back. That makes sense? Just do three, three. One, two. Uh, so uh, people are asking about the grip. Uh, I do like the five finger grip, which means this is the hand holding the chin, and I back it up with this hand. I've done it for so long, I can't switch to any other way with an arm guillotine, but some of my students have success with using the, the sharp part, the part I told you not to attack the back of the neck with. This is very good to attack the front of the neck with, so if I get it here, the forearm is okay too. Um, for this, remember, it's a choke, so I need that straight bar. So, collarbone to collarbone. So over here, this starts to move. My hand's already in place. I'm trying to work the dart, but she rolls. I've got knee on belly. See how high my elbow is? So I hop, hop, hop. Now my head should be just above Lizzie's shoulder. I'm first gonna, before I squeeze it all, I'm going to bring my elbow down below her shoulder. Squeeze and roll my shoulder back. So I don't want you to squeeze early and squeeze the wrong part. Well, that's a long question. Yeah. Do you still have her chin? I do, yeah. I, I think the chin is like one of the best handles on the body. I can control someone's uh, directional turn. So if I get to do that, even though she's rolling, She's going to do it slower because I'm holding her chin. So here, you can try either. I like this one, like I said, because I can still hold the chin. So I'm on the chin, Liz starts to roll. I go kind of like a bastardized knee on belly, and I step up. You see my head's not down here, it's here, so pretty much our spines are parallel. First I'm going to look and check my elbow. It's too high, I'll bring it lower. 
squeeze, and then roll. So our position is pretty much here, almost like a knee on belly, and my head is just above Lizzie's head. Here. That. The roll, my head goes down. Uh, I don't use the front of my head here because it's hard for me to roll my shoulder back. I use the top of my head like I'm doing a handstand. Step out. The checkpoints are check your elbow, get it below the shoulder. Squeeze the elbow, then roll your shoulder back. If your forearm or, or hand, if you're following this line, the power involved is very small. If you're at a wrong angle, you see people leaning back and cranking the shit at people's necks. As long as I have this straight bar, the power needed to finish them is very, very small. One more time. We've got chain control. That's it. Chain control, I'm starting to watch the darts, I feel the roll. Knee on belly, head like a handstand. Pivot until our, our, our spines are aligned. Check your elbow. Now with my hand and my elbow are, are the same line as our collarbones. A, a slight pinch with the elbow, then roll the shoulder back. And your partner should feel it just right here. Shouldn't feel it to the sides. So be a good bottom guy and just tell your partner if you feel it in the wrong place. Any questions? So the key, straight bar. If there's a straight bar, everything will be easier. One, two. <laughs> so pretty much people understand the mechanics of how the arm should be moving. It was just positioning the body to allow that to happen. So if we ignore my hands right now, it's like kind of like a needle belly, but not really. So I'm almost here. My butt's pretty much sitting on top of Lizzie's. My head's gonna be just above hers. This is my body position. So our spines are pretty, mel uh, pretty much parallel. If I've got this kind of angle, there's no way my elbow's getting below the shoulder. So I'm like here, almost like a neon belly with my head just above. Another thing that people wanna do, cause it's meant, right? People wanna be close. So if I go really, really close, my elbow doesn't go below. So, when I'm in position here, my chest isn't even touching Lizzie's. See how easily my arm gets to move now. So I'm on the top of my head, not here somewhere, right in my own neck. I'm balancing on my head, my chest isn't touching, our spines are aligned. Elbow below, pinch, and roll back a little bit. So in real time, you start to roll. See, I'm way off. So I hop, 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 elbow moves. So just have some awareness of knowing my butt pretty much on the <coughs> top of Lizzie's butt, and my head will be as close as it can be to the opposite side of the choke. Does that answer your question? Yes. yes. We'll say yes and find out then. Cool. <laughs> we'll do it again. One, two. Uh, so I have more tips for there. A few um, uh, problems that I've so, um, One is, if I feel like I want to go for this, I can start adjusting this elbow from the start. I can be like, oh, there we go, now it's closer to, a little bit closer to our shoulder. So when I roll, it's going to be a little bit easier. I don't always have the choice, but I can, right? I'm going to bring this elbow in. It's fairly easy to do. Uh, second is, I've got my grip. A lot of people are like, this starts to roll. And I'm like, here. I've already lost the grip there. It's going to be hard to recover the grip. So I have my head, it's big. So I actually start to roll. Head goes down, then step. My elbow's miles away, so I turn myself. I'm going to turn to myself clockwise here until my elbow's low enough. Um, so use your head as your base rather than take your hands off. If I have the guillotine grip, I want to keep my hands together. It's going to be much easier to fight off one hand than it is to fight off two. Um, try to make sure you're in a straight line here the whole time. And just look at your elbow. You can move your elbow in many ways, right? Um, when I'm here, I like to keep my arm as soft as possible until it's in a choking position. If I tense really hard, it's like I'm stopping my own elbow from moving. I have nothing right now, right? I let my arm move freely. And then I can get the choke. So I, I keep it soft, like a piece of rope, until it has to be tight. So don't think about squeezing super hard now, I can't move my own elbow. Not because my arm's up long enough or Liz is stopping me, because I'm stopping me. So this arm's like a rope. Oh, now it's in position, so it's soft. <coughs> the second part is so I can move my elbow, but if it can't move any further, I use my obliques. Then I can get that same perpendicular shape between my spine and my, and my forearm or to bring it below. <coughs> so my hands are together, my head's basing. I use my foot to position. This is like my rudder deciding where I steer. If my elbow's still too high, I just move my, move my uh, obliques a little bit. But if I keep this arm soft, it's fairly easy to move. 
you can check it, make sure it's below the shoulder, you can even aim for the collarbone. And if it's in the right spot, the tap stall is very quickly. So we have like five minutes left. Do you have questions on that first or do you want to try to come I, back? I have one. Uh, in finishing, do you uh, put your hips in or do you, do you believe in, in uh, positioning your hands like in darts? I am not pushing with the hips at all. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, uh, if, my, if, this, if this forearm is creating a straight bar, I feel like the pressure required is so small. Mm -hmm. you, I, I think, I believe you see it done wrong in the UFC and stuff, and people are just like, cranking the shit out and pushing their hips in a lot. People see that on TV, think it's the way you come to the gym and do it, but I don't think it is the way. Unless you're superhumanly strong and, you know, stare out your mind, but if you do it correctly, like, even against bigger guys, I'll tap with one hand if I have a straight bar. If my elbow's slightly out of position, then I can't tap anybody. So I believe if you have that part, the rest you'll probably get away with. You don't need to push it too hard. So slight roll, slight, slight pinch, this has to be straight. Do like a, oh, not much time. Maybe do one dars, one geeti, and then switch. Maybe we've got a couple minutes for a question at the end. Good, one, two. Um, if you got one dars there the whole time, that's more than I got from my first eight years of training uh, without hurting one's neck. So if you manage that, awesome. Geeting took me five years to have a decent one, so it takes a lot of time, but for me, uh, remembering the shapes uh, helps me kind of diagnose any chokes or strangulation of the client do as far as no geek is concerned. The V-shape fall on the chin and the straight bar. If you remember them, then you can sort of self-diagnose your own chokes and strangulations. Does that make sense? Does everyone have any questions? Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.